Hi, welcome to Forensic Education. I'm Sergeant Mike McCutcheon. Today we're going to cover basic fingerprinting and setting up our portable fuming chamber. We're going to then lift that fingerprint that we fume in our fuming chamber with just some basic black powder and a regular duster. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is put my gloves on because we're going to be using super glue. Um, when people talk about super glue fuming, they're talking about cyanoacrylate fuming. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to heat super glue so that it turns into a gas and then sticks to our fingerprint and that way we can process it just in case we make any errors we would be able to process it again without losing that fingerprint. And let me show you what I mean. So here's a mug <clears throat> that I put a fingerprint on for practice. Now if we're looking at this and we use our magnifying glass we're not going to see any fingerprints on here but that doesn't mean that there isn't fingerprints on here. So we're going to super glue fume it and then we're going to dust it for fingerprints and see what we have. So what we need for our fuming chamber is any type of container that can cont hold the gas. For example, I'm just using this plastic bin. I have the top for it and we're going to set that up. So the first thing you need is a heating element. Now this heating element is just a coffee cup warmer or you could also use a uh, candle heater or something like that and that's going to go in to the fuming chamber. Now I made a little notch on the side so that the cord will hang out and I can plug this in. The second thing we're going to need is some type of metal dish or a uh, aluminum so that way you can put your super glue in that and that is going to go onto your heating element. Now super glue works best when there's high humidity. So what I'm also going to do is take a regular cup of hot water. Usually what I would use is if you have a water cooler or something like that in your office or in your, in your lab, you could fill that with the hot water and then you could put that in there as long as it's steaming. So that's going to go in. Now we're just going to take uh, regular super glue, you can, any, any super glue that has cyanoacrylate, you would be able to look at the label and make sure that it says cyanoacrylate on the label and you can use that super glue. So we're going to go ahead and put our mug in. Now I'm going to use my super glue. Now I'm adding that to our metal tray. I'm going to put the lid on and now we're going to let that cook for a little bit. Now you can over fume and what you'll see and I'm not sure if you can see it on the front here but it's this used to be clear but it's start to get a little bit foggy and frosty because I've used this chamber over and over again and so that can happen if you over fume your items. So you want to make sure that you put a check or something on the outside so that way you'd be able to see when your fuming is done. Otherwise the ridges of your fingerprint are going to run together and you're not going to get a good print. The other thing that's important to remember is this is a portable chamber. There's no fuming hood in here. We're in the studio but if you're at a crime scene you have to remember that they are super glue fumes in here and they can be harmful to you. So when you would open this you would need to do that outside or in a well ventilated area. Um, for the purposes of today, I've already fumed these items, so there's no fumes in here. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take our item out. So now our item <clears throat> would be super glue fumed. Now it is possible that you would be able to see the fingerprints on the cup before you even process it after super glue fuming but these aren't sticking out at me so we're going to actually dust for fingerprints with this. Since we're using the white mug we're going to use a nice black powder. Now it's important that you use a high quality powder. I'm using the super black powder from Lynn Peavy. So 
So I'm going to fan my brush out. Now it's important when you have your powder that you don't jam the brush into the powder. It's going to ruin your brush and it's going to contaminate your powder. So what you do is take just a tiny bit and put it on the side here and that's going to be enough to dust for fingerprints. So now that we have a little bit of dust on our brush, I'm going to go ahead like that, and very lightly, I'm going to spin my brush very lightly. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You get that nice close up. So we have lots and lots of ridge detail that are uh, from this. Now, yes, I, I planted these prints on here, so they're going to be fully developed. But even in a regular scene or a regular crime scene, you're going to be able to get some ridge detail if it's there. Now, the nice thing about this is if I did make a mistake and I used too much powder, I would be able to lift it and reapply the powder and try to lift it again because I fumed the print to the cup. Um, so let's, uh, let's lift this first and then we'll, we'll try something else. So I'm just going to use a basic tape to lift. So I'm going to put it down here for the close up. I'm going to take my tape and if there's more than one print you want to lift both of them at the same time. So I'm going to lift these two prints. So I'm going to put my tape on. I'm actually pushing on the print Make sure we get it. Then I'm going to lift. So now I'm putting that tape on a backing card. And there we have a beautiful print lifted. So now, normally, if I just lifted this at the scene and I didn't super glue fume it, this print would be gone. So what we're going to try, I'm going to try an experiment here, and I haven't tried this yet, but I'm going to try to dust this print again and see if we can get, another, get it again. Because it should be fumed right on there. So again, I'm going to lightly dust it. Ah, there we go. Now if we go back to the close-up, you can see the print is still there, clearly visible. It's not wiped away. Lots of ridge detail. You can see a little bit of the tape from where the tape, the striations from the tape, but that's still a liftable print. So if we wiped that away, I could go ahead and dust it again. And again, those prints are still going to be there. Now, I know you would say, well, what's the benefit of fingerprint or fingerprint fuming while you're at the crime scene? Well, if you put this item and you wanted to take this back to the lab for a fingerprint, and you put it in the bag without super glue fuming it. I showed you that I wiped away with my hand the fingerprint, and the fingerprint is still on here. If you put this from the crime scene into a bag, and then you put that in your patrol car, and that flops around in there a little bit, and then you take it out at the station and you put that in your evidence, and then it gets sent to the lab or however your procedure is, eventually this print, the bag is going to start rubbing against it, and this print is going to be gone. So that's why it's important that you fume it on the scene. Even if you didn't dust it on the scene, it would be good if you had a situation where you could fume it so that you can make sure that that print's going to be there when you get back. Now, this chamber needs a heating element. So we're going to look at a way that we can do that without a heating element. So I'm going to take this down. So this is a, a portable fuming chamber that I had uh, in one of my other videos. I showed you how to use this chamber uh, with a hot shot by Lynn Peavy. 
But what I'm going to show you today is something that uh, I've, I use every once in a while when I don't have a heating element. And what I've done is I have treated cotton balls with just water and baking soda. I soak them with water and baking soda and let them dry. Now what happens is when I put the super glue on the cotton balls that have been treated, they're going to fume. And I'm going to show you how, how well this works, but I have to warn you again, this is inside. If you did this inside, you would need to make sure that you go outside to open it up because it's going to really fume. The second thing, when you use a heating element and you're slowly heating that super glue, you have better control of how much it fumes. When you're using the cotton balls, it's one big shot of fumes and you're not going to be able to really regulate. You're going to have to be really careful that you don't over fume. So let me put this over here in the close up. I'm going to add some super glue and I want you to be able to see how much this is going to fume. So I'm going to I have the metal tray. I loaded it with the treated cotton balls. I'm going to move this over. Okay, so I'm going to, are you able to see through that? It's okay. All right, so we're going to squirt our super glue on there. Now you can see that fuming. Beautiful. I'm going to take that down, let that finish. Okay, so we saw that how fast that fumes, lots of lots of fumes. So you have to be careful again with how quickly that that's going to fume your items because you don't want to over fume it. Another thing with the portable chamber is you can also include that hot water in there. Uh, to really get that humidity up. You want about 75-80% humidity in there is really going to make those fingerprints pop out at you. Um, we used a regular tape and just a black powder today. In some of the other videos we talked about non-porous uh, non surfaces and porous surfaces and textured things like that. This was just setting up your fuming chamber and then you can use those other techniques once your item is fumed. I hope you enjoyed today's show. You can check me out on ForensicEducation.net and you can buy any of these products at LynnPV.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.